I was beginning to feel like I was the hunter and the hunted. Right now, I held the clue to Marcos's hideout in my very hand, the key to room 227 of the Buena Vista Hotel. told me the hotel was completely filled. Damn it. What did I do with my keys? The girl in the back who answered to the name of Jenna was flattered by my interest, but she wouldn't say much at first. I could tell she was holding something back. Her name was Clarice. I was pretty sure that behind that angel face was a devious little thing. The young lady told me that the girl in the next chair had stolen my key. My fake ID was working wonders. The little thief sheepishly agreed to give me back my key. has obviously been told to guard the room. The young lady was glad to find the pearl Mr. Marcos had given her. Perfume lingered in the room that Marcos had the key to. The room next door was empty. It had simply been reserved by phone. Mm -hmm. What's the point? I can hardly tell her I already have the key to someone else's room. I asked the young lady to distract the receptionist for a minute. I'd managed to ascertain from the register that room 227 was occupied by a lady and that the next room was reserved in the name of a private club. So it's a woman in room 227. Probably Marcos's lover. 225 is reserved under the name of Club Zanzibar. Zanzibar. I know that name from Marcos's Odds and Ends. Club Zanzibar. At last, I've got the whole name and the right phone number. The phone club Zanzibar pretending to be from the hotel. Some guy named Sergio told me that room 225 was reserved for his boss, Mr. LaGrange. 
Paul Lagrange, the politician, of course. Boss at the Zanzibar Club. Thanks for the info. Lucky I didn't come across the closed mouth type. I pretended to be Mr. LaGrange and canceled his reservation for room 225. I finally got hold of the key to the room next to Marcos's. At last I was going to find out who was in there. I called the person in the room next door. It seemed I had gotten her out of the tub. I pretended that I had the wrong number, and then I tried to check out the situation by doing a bit of smooth talking. She was pretty cagey, but I wasn't going to give up that easily. Now that I heard her voice, I was expecting an eventful evening. I ordered champagne for room 227 and waited for room service to come. First time I saw Ada Wertmuller, a shiver went right down my spine. She had the kind of killer smile that could put you down and out for the count. Ada Wertmüller, a German ecological politics student fresh out of Karlsruhe University. Driven by her convictions, she had seduced Marcos to infiltrate his circle and sabotage his drug trade. She clearly had no idea he was dead and I certainly didn't feel like being the one to break the news. In any case, I sure was crazy about her, and I wasn't gonna let anybody ruin this very special moment. I'd come to see my buddy Freddy, a newspaper columnist, to entrust him with my precious film. As soon as it was developed, everybody would be able to see that Tony Marcos, the trafficker, and Paul LaGrange, the politician, were in cahoots, and not everybody was going to like it. Freddy was an honest guy. He was determined to publish the photos even if it put his own family in danger. In the meantime, I decided to continue my inquiry at the Club Zanzibar, which, surprise, surprise, was run by LaGrange. <laughs> 